Guan Yu, the God of War. This mighty general left a mark on the Three Kingdoms history. But what if after death he was thrown into the vault of Valheim? This is Aiming for Gaming, and today I'll tell you the story about Guan Yu and his 100 days in Valheim. Day 1, right from the start I realized that this vault is against me, because it rained like hell. So they summon rain with their magic, what of it? So I thought. But then I realized that in this vault I have no items, no army and, most importantly, no skills. In other words, I had to learn how to use even a simple sword once again. That was horrifying, yet inspiring, so I defined several rules. Firstly, I should always be well fed and rested before any battle to maximize my chances of winning. Secondly, I must prepare good equipment and train myself before attacking the bosses. Lastly, I had no idea how long I will stay here and what death will mean to me, so I won't let anyone kill me. With these rules in mind, I started my journey full of surprises. First of all, I've punched several tree saplings and crafted a simple club. Decided to try it on more saplings, but got attacked by a boar. At this point, even a boar can kill me, so I should be careful. So I ate some raspberries I found, then killed necks which drop tails. I think I'll fry them, but later. Picked some stone and crafted a stone axe and a hammer, I'll need them soon. Decimated the whole neck population for their tails. Nothing personal, just hunger. Hunted a deer for its tasty ribs and hide, would use it for my future armor. Found abandoned hut, nothing fancy, but enough for my first hideout. So I placed down a workbench, campfire and two cooking stations. I was not a cook, but frying meat is frying meat. The smell of fried meat had attracted Grayling. Well, unfortunate for him. I used the chest inside the hut to free up my space and ate fried meat plate with pork, venison and I don't know what. Tail of a tail? Well fed and rested, I had almost 5 times more health, so I started my hunt for the flint, stones, deers and boars. I even found one star deer, but failed to kill him with one or even three strikes. I pursued him and oh crap, even the fourth strike was not enough. And the bastard had fled in the ocean. Ok, I'll wait. I had no plans of sleeping at nights anyway, so it is not a big deal. And after a while I finished my job for extra hides and meat. Invigorated by this victory, I attacked a pack of boars. They were already a no match for me. Found a second hut, but was stung by wild beasts. My revenge was deadly and imminent. I placed a workbench and teared down the whole hut along with the bees. Never mess with shoot generals. By day 2 I already had a bow, a shield and a flint axe from resources I gathered during the night, so I tried wood cutting. The first lock fell right onto my hut and broke part of the roof. That's why I prefer pole arms. So I repaired my house and placed a bed and a second chest. Beds here allow you to revive after death, but I'm not playing today, so who cares about that? With bows my hunts became much easier, I learned how to shoot from Master Hyung Junk after all. I even killed two one-star deers during my second night. It was enough to craft the remaining parts of leather set, so I decided that tomorrow I will fight my first boss. On day 3 I added 3 more cooking stations and gathered my first honey. For now it's the best food for stamina. Then I found the altar where I could summon the first boss. He had 3 main attacks, each of them could be easily dodged if you run. After defeating the first boss I continued my journey. By the way, this was one of the best shots so far. I reached the spawn point to put the head of Kong Shu on the altar and get the power of sprint as a reward. On day 4 I decided to prepare enough wood for my future search of better settlement. This time I was much more accurate to not break my current home. After a while I found a pretty nice abandoned village to settle on, again with almost comfortable houses to live. I quickly placed some of my stuff inside one of the houses. Then I repaired to the second hut to make it my blacksmith and crafting house. It was almost time of Bronze Age, so I crafted my first pickaxe from boss drop and started improving my skills at mining. A general cutting stone. It will be a long journey. Day 5 started with deer running to my village. A fatal mistake. By the middle of the day I finished my defenses. From that moment I had become invisible for enemies. Day 6 I used to gather some bird's feathers for fire arrows. Then I observed the most respectful thing in this world. One deer covered his brother with its own body. What a heroic move! 
His family died right after that, but I'll always remember such bravery. My new enemies were great dwarves, but with my shield they were no match for me. Who could imagine that someone will build stone tower in the forest? So much work and so much time wasted. Day 7. Leveled some ground to prepare land for farming. Brother, forgive me for doing peasant's job. To redeem myself, I tear down unused building for an easy wood. I felt better. I was low on food supplies, so I visited the near snack groups to borrow some of their tails. Let us call this a tribute. On day 8 I found my first copper deposit and marked it on the map. I felt that I'll mine it from top to bottom soon. Attacked one star skeleton, but realized that he has two star friend nearby. Even one skeleton was a huge threat to me with my gear, so I used my retreat tactic to kill them one by one from a distance. Well, a decent amount of bones will be handy. Also, skeletons usually protect burial chambers, so it was a good sign for me. Two more skeletons were ready to welcome me inside, so I placed a fire so that we could rest together. They were not happy about that, so I killed them. While resting alone, I was thinking about my next steps. To get into Copper Age, I had to farm certain cores. Ideally, 20 of them to build two smelters and two kilns. I was lucky I found four of them in one of the rooms. Unfortunately, that was the only room in the cave with cores, so I continued my journey. I was fighting skeletons in the Black Forest and continued my cave runs on day 9. When it became dark, I returned to my village with 14 circling cores. It was enough only for two kilns or smelters, but it's still better than nothing. I started making call for my future smelting. On day 10 I returned to previously found copper deposit, placed a temporary workbench for quick pickaxe repairs and started mining. You should always remember that if there is something above the ground, there might be much more below. The easiest way to get everything was to mine the ground around and then go to the center. So I was mining, resting, repairing and mining again. This night I had around 20 copper ores and plenty of coal, so I replaced my kilns with smelters and started making copper. Then I headed to nearest seashores to get tin ores, but got ambushed by grey dwarves. What a shame. The brute was one of the most dangerous grey dwarves, so I used my bow to kill him, then finished off his army. By the morning of day 11 I already found some tin deposits, which meant bronze in the future. The biggest threats for me were millions of ambushes, like this one for example. Die, you covered. Day 11. My backpack was full of tin ores, the weather was terrible, so I headed home to process all that. Then I made some nails to build one of the most important things in Valheim, a cart. With some spare tin at my disposal, I decided to place a cauldron for better food production. For some reason, the winds were continuously stopping my fires. Okay, I'll get used to it. Before going for the rest of copper, I prepared my hoe to place a path. Having a clean vision on deposit has a big advantage. I was able to clear several chunks at once by simply isolating them above ground. Physics in Valheim is great. This way I spent the whole day 12, chilling near a fire between mining and mining. On day 13 I met an expected enemy, the troll. I had still a crappy armor but better foot, so I chose to fight him from the long range. It was more than enough to kill the troll without being hit once. That's how I've got my first troll hides. I placed more than 3 full stacks of copper ore and 1 stack of tin ore into my cart and headed home. As I thought, with rod it was easy and comfortable. While my ores were being smelted, I crafted myself a bronze axe, which allowed me to cut birch trees for fine wood. My bronze armor set was ready, so I could not fear black forest anymore. Day 14. I placed first portal, which I planned to use as shortcut to Elder. While running in the forest, I collected a plenty of certain cores anyway, so it was not a big deal to spend some on portals. This day was important to me, as I finally crafted my favorite polar arm weapon. From now on, the name of Guanyu will spread around this world. But before heading to Elder, I wanted a decent bow, so I visited Black Forest again, watched a bit how grey dwarves and skeletons kill each other and cut pine trees for the core wood. Then I crafted a fine wood bow and upgraded it to level 3. It was almost time to find the second boss and cut his head. I just needed better food to feel absolutely safe. Day 15. I found so many carrots that I decided to plant them in my base. They were a requirement for the next food tier. To not waste time, I visited the nearest troll cave. I wanted more troll hides to craft the cave. To be honest, I prefer green color, but blue is fine as well, at least temporary. Day 16. If you won't come to the forest, then the forest will come to you. A huge pack of grey dwarfs decided to kill me right at my fortress. What a stupid idea. This Gonyu is the master of pole arms, witness my true power. Even the brute was like a puppy compared to what I've become. When my blade tasted enough great dwarf blood, the forest ran away, they will remember that lesson. Meanwhile, with my honey and other ingredients, I've prepared a meat base for healing and poison resistance potions. 
They will help me a lot in Swam biome. Day 17. The carrots were still growing, so I concentrated on the second copper deposit and trapped a grey dwarf somehow. I continued this on day 18 and mined 3 stacks of copper ores, which was enough to upgrade my gear to level 3. Day 19. Let's just call it a smelting day. My healing potions were also ready, so I placed poison meat for fermenting. Finally, carrots had grown. This opened me a door for a brand new list of delicious food recipes. With this in hand I cooked deer stew and minced meat sauce. Day 20 I spent guess how? Yep, smelting. Then I upgraded my weapon and armor to tier 3. Day 21 was the day when I fully prepared for Elder. This boss was tall and powerful, but so was I. During the battle I was using pillars to protect myself from his ranged attacks. At some point the boss decided that I am only good at shooting. This was his biggest mistake. If you dare to fight Guan Yu in a duel, be prepared for the consequences. My last blow cut his head and the battle was over. Day 22 was the labor day when I tried to collect as much wood as I could. Then I killed a troll with sneaky shots and returned home to place two new portals. I had to find swamp and it could be far away from my base. On day 23 I built my boat. It was the most dangerous part of the whole 100 days, because if someone will sink my boat in the ocean, it will be 100% death. Anyway, I was prepared, so I set sails and realized that winds are against me. Alright, I'll use paddle for now. So I started my ocean journey to the swamps. I passed grey dwarfs, fought winds. And guess what? I found a trader. Not a single swim, but a trader. I had resources for one portal, so I just placed it near this trader and headed back home. Then I simply returned to trader with valuables, sold them and bought a Maggie, Megging, a belt that increased my carry weight limit by half. Day 24. I collected nearest tin ores in the trader's forest, placed them in my boat and continued my journey. I still had to find swamp to get into Iron Age. My boat started to shake, I panicked, but it was just a fish. Nice collision models. But at least I've got a fish for free. Meanwhile, a strange structure had attracted me, so I decided to check it. I had no idea what was that, but it looked really cool, and there was another structure of the same type nearby. The place was great, so I realized that I finally found a perfect spot for my palace. I placed a portal and started to move my stuff from previous base. At this point I'll try to mention only the key moments or this story will be 2 hours long. Also, I should mention that roughly 98% of you watching this video are not subscribed. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe buttons. It takes only one click and will help my channel grow. Thank you all for your support. Day 25. Tried to level ground and mine unnecessary rocks and broke one of these things. Dummy. Ok, one is enough. Days from 26 to 32 I spent fully on preparing the foundation and even ground for my palace. To show it at full scale I used console commands. This was done only for a camera mode, but just look how epic camera can be. This foundation was for a home 22 by 24. I wanted to make a palace with my dynasty architecture, so I've chosen the style of Sikiyan. Then I placed the walls on the corners to organize a safe zone. Next I built the master residence where I was planning to live. It was supposed to have two floors and a high roof to reflect wealth and prosperity. I had not yet unlocked iron and stone cutting, so I placed the same fires and cooking stations I had in my previous village. On days 33 and 34 I built the blacksmith house and storage zone. Then I constructed the left wing of main residence. On day 35 I demolished everything related to blacksmithing in my old base and transported it by ship to my palace. At this point my blacksmith house became fully operational. Obviously I've prepared zones for smelting and teleportation hub as well. Days from 36 to 38 I spent seeking for swamp biome near my palace and finally found it. With one star draw group. Which will be my main source of sausages ingredients. Swamp was dangerous for me at the moment even with upgraded bronze gear, so I tried to kill simple stuff like leeches for their blood bags and mark creep locations on the map. The elder dropped a key to unlock these creeps and I could farm iron inside. On day 39 I returned to my base with first stack of scrap iron, then smelted it to create iron nails. With them I built the best ship in the game just near several crypts to speed up the transporting process. My plan was the same as with copper. I prepare a rod, then I use my car to collect and transport scrap iron to the ship. By the way, my polearm was ideal for this cave, I could easily reach enemies from a safe distance. 
To fill myself rested and keep pickaxes repaired, I used simple structure with workbench, several roofs and fire to regain my power. Days from 40 to 42 passed under the motto Farm iron, that's all you need. Then I simply put it into my new ship extended storage chest and was ready to go home. I had almost 10 stacks of scrap iron, which was enough for everything I needed before killing the boss. And of course I collected 10 bones to summon next boss and even found a place where it can be summoned. I was feeling confident, until I got stuck in the middle of a night in the plains biome with a bronze gear. Seriously, why the hell what he decided to disappear? I was lucky, no one attacked me and I successfully pushed my boat manually. On day 43 I realized that I am terrible at sailing, as I almost got stuck once again. And finally, after a very long journey, I've reached my palace with my precious cargo on the boat. With iron at my disposal, I placed a stone cutter to modify my blacksmith house a bit by adding a stone floor. Now it looks almost finished. Days 44 and 45 were used to smelt iron scrap and upgrade everything. All 300 scrap was used for buildings, weapons and armor, and by the end of day 46 I was standing in level 3 iron gear, with mace and shield against bone mass and new add gear for all other enemies. Day 47 was a day when I set sail to reach bone mass. It was pretty far away, but it was nothing compared to what I passed by returning home with the iron scrap. After reaching bone mass island, I placed a small camp with portal and simple defenses to rest and then cleared everything around the summoning zone. On day 48 I used wither bones to summon the next boss. With upgraded gear, neither his minions nor his poison were a big threat to me. The only important thing was his regular attack, which I could easily parry and then attack him several times. In the end, Bianxi died near his summoning altar, giving me a wishing bone as a reward and also the power to become almost unkillable for several minutes. Days from 49 to 51 I spent celebrating my victory by farming even more iron and also some gag from the trees. Surprisingly, when I returned home I got attacked by dragons. Well, my brothers also called me a dragon, so it was a pleasure to check who is stronger. Day 52 I prepared my cold resistance potion and headed to the nearest mountain in search of dragon eggs, silver, wolf pelts and mortar or its stone. I was lucky to find an egg and my wishbone pointed me to a silver vein. I decided to mine it the whole night. Day 53. As with copper, I removed the ground around silver vein. You might ask why I did this, because instead of wasting my time mining the whole deposit, I could choose the right position and do this. With this trick I have got 75 silver in just several swings. At night the mountains decided to revenge me for their silver loss, so I had to fight golems and dragons. Nevertheless, they were no match for Shu General. Then, under the cover of night, I descended from the mountain with cart full of silver. At some point I thought that I'll die from falling with my cart, so I quickly let it go without me. Day 54. I successfully delivered one dragon egg and 75 silver to my boat. My destination, as usual, was the palace. After that I successfully crafted a silver set with natural resistance to cold, meaning that I won't have to drink potions anymore. Then I prepared ice cream for dragons and great dwarfs drops, and several wolf jerkies. Day 55. Started my second journey to farm silver veins. As usual, wind was against me. Found another mountain with two veins near each other. Spent whole day 56 mining them and a lot of stone as a bonus. Looks like I'm starting to like this. Day 57. Try to find boss stone and get some obsidian for arrows, but there was no boss stone on the whole mountain. Demotivated, I descended with 5 stacks of silver and 2 more eggs to compensate my pain. Day 58. Play stacks and silver rain on my boat. Now I have all 3 eggs to summon a modder, but I have no idea where the modder is. Crafted a Draugr Fang, a bow made of silver that can poison enemies. And it's glowing, nice. Spent days from 59 to 61 trying to find anything related to modder on all mountains. It was depressing, I checked 5 mountains in total with no luck. At last on day 62 I found an island with huge mountain and checked one of its structures. This was exactly what I needed, a boss stone. I revealed the boss location and… really? The boss was 200 meters away. So the stone that was supposed to help me find an island with boss in fact was located at an island with boss? And if you think that it's ironic, then watch this. I found another stone nearby. Okay, I had to keep calm and transport eggs, so I returned to my ship and… 
realized that there are three deers on a small island near Modor. That was a sign to me. I remembered my brothers and the fact that I'm here for two months already and still haven't met anyone from my family. I placed a portal near Modor and continued transporting eggs. Day 63. The day when I summoned Modor. With my current gear I had a decent damage from both ranged and melee attacks. The boss was rotating between two phases. The first one was in the sky, where Huban was attacking me with deadly ice balls. It was easy to dodge, I could just move several steps to the side and that was enough to avoid being hit. The second one was on the ground, where, with the help of Monma's power, I could simply ignore boss attacks and use my polo arm to land deadly hits. Sometimes Modor used its ice breath, but it was not enough to kill me. After 10 minutes of fearful battle, I cut Huban's head for the glory of Shu Kingdom. This general also dropped 10 tears, which I could use to make an artisan table. I placed Huban's head among other three generals I slain. To finish my duty, I had to kill one last general, called Wang Ji. But before that, I had to prepare. I needed a new set of armor, new weapon, new food and a fire resistance potion. So I placed an artisan's table. On day 64 I reached the plains. I found a seashore with Meadow's biome. Which meant less risky exploration in the search of base spot. I teleported home to check my new friend, a one-star boar I catched earlier, whom I was planning to tame. I threw him some raspberries, it will be his diet for the rest of his life. On day 65 I returned to Meadows near my boat and found a village full of draugers. There was even a building with their jarl, which I successfully cleaned from these guys. Wolves chose me as their target. Looks like they had no idea who is the dragon here and who is just a dog. I wanted to tame Log, so I visited Leviathan and mined his hit in for Abyssal Harpon. Day 66. I built a small fortified planary in the plains biome where I was planning to grow barley and flax. Near it I dug a hole for logs. Then I harpooned and catched the first logs. I tried to catch the second logs, but the hole was too small and my spontaneous digging attracted only foolings, so I decided that one log will be enough for me. The second log steered down my base, so I killed him for meat. That will teach him. Under the cover of night I rebuilt and even expanded my fortifications to fit more crops inside. Day 67. I killed the remaining third logs for even more meat. It will go for logs meat pies, one of the best available food recipes for now. On day 68 and 69 I was hunting for foolings, their shamans and berserkers. I completely destroyed several villages, at the same time getting their totems, black metal scrap, flax and barley. I also found several tar pits, which I emptied by digging long trenches. Tar was required to build nice looking roofs. On day 70 I was unlucky enough to meet a huge pack of foolings and one star berserker. I had to run the whole 10 minutes to deal with them one by one. It took longer than killing most of the bosses. At this point I also got enough needles to craft needle arrows. My boar was finally tamed. I called him Menghua and organized him a beautiful stable. Day 71. I planted barley and flax on the whole field, then built a windmill and spinning wheels to process them into barley floor and linen threads. I also placed a stone oven. Now I can start baking bread. Day 72. I collected all my black metal scrap, more than 7 stacks, and prepared them for transporting via boat, as usual. I like its glowing color. It reminds me of home. Day 73. Built a stone floor under my smelting zone, then built furnaces to process black metal. Day 74. My barley and flax have grown. Time to replant them. Day 75 at 76. Built a new house for cooking in my palace, then got attacked by a horde. That was fatal. For them. They sank my ship and I had no reach to the resources it cost. After a while I found a solution with rising ground and got my precious iron nails. Only on the next day I realized that I also killed Menkuo. I built a sign for him, but maybe he'll return 6 more times. Day 78. Just look how cool all my harvest is becoming fully grown. Time to replant it again. Days from 79 to 84 I spent building a stone wall around my castle. I had enough spare time to do that while my flax was growing. Days from 85 to 87. Hunted serpents for their meat, then cooked serpent stew, which was one of the best dishes I could make. Also crafted level 4 black metal add gear, padded armor and finally a green cape. Day 88. Tamed the locks and named it Red Hair. Now I have everything prepared for my fifth boss. That's why I spent days from 89 to 97 building my palace. Day 98. By this day I had best food, fire resistance potion, maxed out black metal weapons and shield and 5 totems to summon the boss. 
So I readied my red hair and headed to the boss location, placed 5 totems and prepared for fight. Red hair tried to help me, but died in a second. I'll never forget you, my friend. The boss had three attacks. One of them was fire beam that was easy to dodge. Another one was powerful hand strike that was burning the ground. And the third one was meteor shower, when I had to run as fast as I could. In the end he was no match for me, so his head also rolled on the ground. I placed a sign for the fallen red hair and took my leave. Wang Ji got what he deserved, and I put my final general trophy for these 100 days on day 99. Thus I have slain 5 generals in my attempt to escape this world. Day 100 I spent resting in my palace. I spent so many days building it, so I have to show you the final result. The main building has two floors. The first floor contains a throne room with maxed out comfort level, a place to relax and think about life. The second floor is bedroom with bathtub and picturesque view on surroundings. The right wing is treasury and armory with the most valuable items I found during my journey. In the middle of the castle you can find a garden and banners in two colors. Of course you can find armory, smelting zones, portal rooms and cooking area inside the castle as well. and a room for artisans' activities and heads of my enemies. This castle can be a great starting point for a new journey and a perfect place to stop by and relax. I heard that there are many other lands to explore and conquer here, but this is another story. For now, the mighty Guan Yu, the great general of Shu, should put off his armor and rest. Thank you all for hearing my story and see you later.